early 20th century, people were just beginning to harness the power of refrigeration using toxic gases like ammonia, methyl chloride, and sulfur dioxide. In 1928, an enterprising inventor at General Motors created a non-toxic chemical for refrigeration called CFC, chlorofluorocarbon. It was patented as Freon by DuPont and sold in air conditioners, fridges, bug sprays, spray paints, hair conditioners, and healthcare products. At its peak, companies were making a million metric tons of CFCs every year. Sure, at sea level, CFCs are non-toxic and safe for humans, but if they get into the upper atmosphere, they're subject to photodissociation, where UV radiation breaks a chlorine atom off the CFC. If that free chlorine finds a molecule itself, in 1977, we were studying the ozone layer, and it was fine. By 1981, there were hints that something was amiss. Then in 1984, scientists suddenly registered a giant hole in the ozone layer. They published their findings, and in 1987, the Montreal Protocol was signed, beginning the phasing out of CFCs shortly thereafter. Meanwhile, even though the house was clearly on fire, DuPont and other companies insisted everything was fine and fought tooth and nail to keep CFCs legal. But they finally relented after scientific evidence became indisputable a looming environmental disaster that pitted corporations against the scientific community. I've never heard that before. Those CFCs can hide in the atmosphere But the ozone layer has gotten thinner. Chemicals called chlorofluorocarbons, or CFCs, are the primary culprits in ozone layer breakdown. A CFC is a molecule that contains the elements carbon, chlorine, and fluorine. CFCs are mostly found in refrigerants, aerosols, and plastic products. When CFCs are exposed to ultraviolet rays in the atmosphere, they break down into substances that include chlorine. The chlorine reacts with the oxygen atoms in ozone and rips apart the ozone molecule. The ozone should be a no-go zone for these chemicals. The ozone is the only thing separating us from skin cancer and a fiery apocalypse. But it's under attack again. Scientists looking at data from Taiwan and Malaysia found that the atmosphere is stacked with the chemical dichloromethane. This chemical is said to deplete the ozone layer over Earth. The ozone helps to protect Earth from the sun's cancerous ultraviolet rays. Scientists also discovered large traces of the chemical dichloroethane, another ozone-depleting chemical. An international treaty phased out ozone-killing chemicals in 1987, but based on this, it'll probably need some amending, and fast. Uh-oh, that's bad news. The BBC reports a home insulation chemical used extensively throughout China may be damaging the Earth's ozone layer. The chemical, CFC-11, was completely banned 80 years ago because it resulted in a massive rise... Pollution from China ruins U.S. effort to cut ozone levels on West Coast. A study published in Nature Geoscience claims the U.S.'s effort to cut ozone levels have gone to waste due to pollution arriving on the West Coast from China. From 2005 to 2010, the U.S. managed to cut ozone-producing nitrous oxide emissions by 20% by imposing strict standards for motor vehicles and industry. During the same period of time, however, China's growth pushed its own ozone levels up by about 7%. Half of the increase in China came from the ground up, while the other half descended from the stratosphere. Although some of that pollution may have been blown to China from India and other parts of Asia. In the same way that the dominant westerly winds blow China's air pollution into the troposphere straight across the Pacific Ocean and into the United States, causing ozone levels to rise again. High levels of pollution can cause respiratory problems, damage to crops, and of course global warming. According to researcher Willem Verstraten, local and national efforts to fight pollution could have a limited impact if the problem is not also dealt with at an international level. Production of chemical hurting the ozone layer. Good day everyone and Base sa naunang video or naunang part ng video na to, alam na agad natin kung ano pag-uusapan for this vlog. And it's all about the, infor the importance of our ozone layer. And this video will be short and very precise dahil magda-direct tayo sa point. Wala na tayong baligay-ligoy. Straightforward tayo. So, ano nga ba ang importance ng ating ozone layer? Una, kung wala yon, magiging sobrang hirap ng buhay natin. 
imagine lalabas ka sa daan na pasong-paso yung buong katawan mo. Baka nga hindi na tayo makalabas dahil sa sobrang init. Magkakaroon tayo ng um, very fast aging ng ating balat. Magkakaroon tayo ng mga sunburns and sun or ng sunburns and many many skin diseases which is mas mahirapan na magtrabaho or makahanap or magkayod pa yung mga tao lalo na yung mga farmers natin which is lagi silang nakabilad and speaking of our farmers wala nang wala nang kahit anong halaman ang maggo-grow why kasi dahil sa exposed or extreme sunlight or extreme ultraviolet rays hindi na nila kakayanin mabuhay, masusunog na lang sila. And without plants, how can we live? Sinong magpifilter ng carbon dioxide sa ating sa ating paligid? Sinong magbibigay sa atin ng oxygen kung walang plants? In short, kung walang ozone layer, wala tayong plants, walang tayo. Walang, wala, wala po talagang kami. Pero ay, ibig sabihin, walang tao na mabubuhay. Walang ozone layer, walang plants, walang human being. So simple, so precise. Kung wala yon, wala tayong mga tao. Yan lang po, and sorry po, ma'am. Pasensya na po. Sorry daw po, sabi ni Snoopy ko. Ito lang po talaga, kasi straightforward po tayo, and Thank you po. Stay safe.